Thanks for joining. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to talk to you about a problem every single person is facing. This problem is called sin. We all have it. The definition of sin according to Oxford languages is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the divine law. And because we broke this law, we are responsible for the consequences of it. Now you may be asking, what divine law have I broken? In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it talks about God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And he made man in his image and likeness, male and female, to worship. And man and woman chose to sin against him by breaking the very law that he put in place to protect them and to keep them with him. As a result, they were separated from God and sin entered the world because of them. And since they were separated from God, we are separated from God. Not because God is being petty, but because God is holy and any unholiness cannot exist in his presence. Just like the man and the woman in Genesis, we too willingly partake in sin, choosing to break the divine law that God put in place. How many of us know that if we were to break the law, there are gonna be consequences? Imagine going 90 miles per hour down the highway when the speed limit is clearly marked 75 miles per hour. If we got caught, we would be pulled over and we would get a ticket. Now, let's take this a step further. Let's say you get caught robbing a bank. What would happen? You would go to jail. You see, there are penalties for breaking laws. Here's the bad news. The penalty for breaking God's divine law is death. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. That means that the only way for us to be in right relationship with God, to no longer be bound under this punishment, is to be holy to live a perfect life without sin. It sounds easy, right? Wrong. You see, being holy isn't just an outward behavior. It's also an inward nature. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter five, you have heard it said, do not murder, but I tell you the truth, whoever hates his brother has murdered him in his heart. Or you have heard it said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you even look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery. You see, it is so much deeper than action. All action is, is an outward working of an inward being. It is our hearts that are in rebellion to God. So in order to come back into right standing with the God of the universe, we must live perfectly, holy, inside and out. That is impossible. But here's the good news. God knew that this was impossible. That is why he came down to live this life for us. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is God himself, lived the perfect, holy, obedient life that you and I couldn't live. And not just that, but he took the punishment that was meant for us. And he died in our place so that we could be back in right relationship with God. But Jesus didn't just stop there. The Bible tells us that Jesus resurrected on the third day and is now sitting in heaven, interceding on behalf of those who are saved. The Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The book of Romans says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. You see, that's it. That's all that is required of us. Jesus started and completed the work. All we are called to do is to believe in him. So I ask you, if you have not called upon the name of the Lord, if you have not confessed with your mouth or believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, would you do that today? Are you ready to take the next step of faith and put your trust in Jesus and receive the eternal life that he promises to give us as a gift instead of the eternal death as a consequence? You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to make yourself clean and whole first. You see, the entire message of the gospel is come as you are. And Jesus will do it all for you. If that's you today, would you pray with me? Would you bow your head? Would you close your eyes? And would you repeat after me? Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for your gospel. Jesus, your word says, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that you are Lord, we will be saved. So God, I confess my sin 
I confess my brokenness. I confess my struggles. And I confess my shame to you right now. Lord, I am a sinner. But your word says that you are a great savior. So Jesus, I believe that you lived the life I could not. I believe that you lived and died and were resurrected on the third day. And Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my transgressions. And Lord, would you help me forgive myself? Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your saving grace. I love you. Help me love you more. I pray this in your name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to meet you and walk with you on this new journey of life. Would you click the link below and join us on Sunday because we would really love to meet you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it was a blessing and encouragement to you. Grace and peace.